access to care can impact or curb, you know, crime rates. Because everyone is talking about, you know, we should do this in the criminal justice system. We should do that. Maybe you shouldn't. Maybe there's an easy way to, you know, solve these problems. We already have a good program. Just expand the benefits and we can show that the benefits exceed the cost. So more than 50% of state prisoners have been diagnosed with substance use disorders in the U.S. What happens to access to care while these people are in prison? And the numbers are not very positive in the sense that only 40% of women and 50% of men access in-prison drug treatment programs. When they are released, they also do not have access to medications or care, and most of them recidivate. If we give these individuals coverage, our research shows that it increases the likelihood of accessing addiction treatment and also mental health treatment. And um, you can imagine that this, um, you know, um, reduces some of these health problems and in turn reduces recidivism. It specifically reduces violent crime or public order recidivism because these tend to be committed impulsively and are often associated with mental health and addiction problems. Currently, um, the federal law prohibits current inmates to use Medicaid's, uh, Medicaid funds for most healthcare services. Uh, in some states, your you know Medicaid is terminated. In some states, it's suspended. With the Affordable Care Act's Medicaid expansion, many low-income adults became eligible um, for Medicaid, and now they can actually benefit from this when they are released. But we also talk about how important it is to enroll these individuals in Medicaid before they get released. They need to find housing. They need to find jobs. So healthcare might not be their priority. There is, for example, evidence that in some states, um, you know, they restricted eligibility of inmates to certain programs. For example, drug felons were prohibited from, you know, using public assistance services. We see that states that actually terminate Medicaid are more likely to see increases in recidivism rates as opposed to states that um, suspend Medicaid. Um, I think it should be expanded uh, in prison too, uh, because you know research shows that high quality in prison treatment reduces recidivism. But fortunately, um, Biden administration's Build Back Better legislation has you know some of these components in it, and um, we just have to see how that unfolds accessing care in prison shouldn't be only focused on, um, you know, mental health treatment or um, substance use disorder treatment, but it should, um, you know, provide a range of services that also mitigate um, the negative effects of these um, chronic health conditions. There's also a lot of stigma around it. So if you're incarcerated and if you're out, you know, you have very limited opportunities. On top of that, if you have addiction problems, uh, that That is also stigmatized and it's, it's a challenge. We cannot solve this in one day. There was this huge debate. We are giving all these benefits to the inmates uh, after they're released. Don't you think that these people are going to have more incentive to commit crimes now? Because if they're in jail, you know, they know that, you know, they can still get all these benefits. People do not simply commit crimes thinking that, you know, in prison, I have this better opportunity. And even if I leave, you know, I'm going to be eligible to all these programs. Um, that's completely, uh, uh, that's a complete false information. Actually did a cost benefit analysis. And we actually saw that cost of providing Medicaid to inmates to avert recidivism within two years is about $1 million. And the benefits that we see in terms of, you know, reduced fiscal costs of incar incarceration or, you know, reduced victimization costs are about $1.3 million. If you don't expand it, then what's going to happen? All these inmates are going to have a hard time reintegrating into society and they're going to come back to jail and you're still paying and funding those jails with your taxes. So I think we should make an effort to really inform the public and show all these facts and then tell them that, you know, if these individuals reintegrate into the society and pay their taxes, it's just going to benefit us.